Are you struggling to keep track of inventory or stock, especially across multiple locations? Then this video is for you. You can even tie this into your current order or sales solution or build your own order management solution on top of this inventory tracker. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. In this video, we are only going to be using Smart Suite. If you do not have an account, there's a link in the description below to get started. You can go in, create a new table or a new solution from scratch, and then we're going to have a few different tables across the top here. First one is going to be products and we can label the records as products. So this is our first one and I'm going to create all our tables first. We'll duplicate this table. We can call the next one inventory. In this case, there is not a inventory option in this list. I don't believe so we can just call it item and we'll duplicate again and we will create a transactions table. And we will duplicate one more time and we'll call this locations. So we can click into the transactions. We can label this transaction. And this one we can label, call the record a location. So there, now we have all of our tables set up. Obviously you can take this even further if you wanted. As I previously mentioned, you can tie this into your current solution if you use a point of sale tool or some other application or software to track your orders. Uh, you can use something like make.com or some other automation solution to tie into your inventory tracker here. That being said, if you do not have something like that already, or you track all of your orders and sales, so that's incoming when you order more inventory or when you sell something, so you're removing it from your inventory, you can actually build it right into this solution as well. I'm not going to get into that part of it. I have other videos that demonstrate how to create order management solutions. And so these two things could definitely link up together and be useful that way. But I will just show more so the inventory side for this video. But what we're actually going to do here, we're going to have our list of products in our products table. We'll also contain our prices. We're going to have inventory. So this is going to work as a junction table essentially between the products and locations. In this case, we are assuming that we have multiple locations. Otherwise, this could be even simplified further. But what the inventory table is going to do is get a list of all the products and it's going to actually get the locations as well. And that's where it's gonna merge those two things. Let's say we're selling an item that could be anything. So bananas, we could have bananas in warehouse one and we could have bananas in our storefront. The products is just one product or one item, which is bananas. However, we need to replicate that or show that across two different records within this inventory table because the bananas actually live at two different locations. So I will show you how to build that out. I just want to give kind of a high level explanation of why we have it set up in this way. And then transactions, that's simply going to be the location where we select the quantity, so whether we're adding quantity to our inventory or removing. So based on an incoming order that we purchased from a supplier or a sale that we have made or removing from our inventory. But I will dive into each of these a little bit further. We'll start in the products table. First thing I like to do, I will label this product ID and I will just update this field for now. So a few additional fields that we need is the name. This can be a text field. We'll bring in a currency field as well, and we'll rename this to rice and that it matters for this demo, but we will bring in a SKU number as well. One other thing that we need to do, we're going to bring in a linked record. So this will link to the inventory table here, and we can actually have that. We will allow linking to multiple records. So we can add that field and now we have a linked field to the inventory. I'll just quickly flip over to inventory fields to display. And because we added it in the products table, it will add it for us in the inventory table as well. So we'll bring that. I'll flip back to products 
for the time being, I will just bring in a text field and we'll just call this quantity available. We will change this to a formula field shortly. Basically what this is going to do is show us the entire quantity that we have within our stock across all locations. So it's not going to tell us where that inventory lives, but it's going to tell us what we actually own or have within our possession. What I'm going to do quickly here is just add a bunch of sample data and quickly import that. And then we will move on to building out the inventory tape. One other thing is product ID. I do want to modify that go into auto generated and we can simply bring in the name, click that plus icon, bring in the name, and then I'll just add a dash and I'll bring in this number as well. And it will automatically create this product ID for us. Within the inventory table, we already have the linked products. We can actually link to the location as well. From the link table, we'll go locations. And in the inventory, it can actually only link to one location at a time. So we'll add that in there as we did so we don't forget. As we did for the inventory table, we'll go into here and we will bring in the link to the inventory from the locations. So back into inventory, I'm going to go to the linked record and I'm going to link to the transactions table as well. And inventory can link to multiple transaction record. We'll add that. And one more time over into transactions and we will just bring in the link to the inventory. So that we don't forget, I will bring in this quantity available. So this is going to be the quantity that's available within each individual location. This will eventually get converted to a rollup field, but we'll just add it as a text field for the time being. And what I want to do here, we'll change this to inventory ID. We'll go auto generated. What we're going to do is bring in the products so we can see each individual product. And we want to be able to see here where the location is as well. Update that field. And once we add a bunch of sample data, you will see how that looks here shortly. I'm going to skip over transactions. I'm going to go right to locations and we can change this to location. We can add some sample locations. You could bring in an address field as well and just type in whatever address the location is at. And it will bring it in, connect to the Google Maps API, and you'll be able to view the location in flip back to transactions and then I will show you how to use some of the roll-up and formula fields. So within transactions, what we've been doing, we will change this to transaction ID and we will make it auto-generated shortly, but I'll just leave it as is for the moment. We'll bring in a number field. We can call this quantity. We do actually want that to be able to be a negative number as well. Bring in the quantity. Bring in a date. So this is the transaction date. If we flip over to the defaults tab, we can flip this to today so that by default, when we create a record, the date will be whatever today's date is. You can change that if you want, but that does make things a little bit quicker and removes a couple of clicks. We'll do a single select field type. We'll make the change this to type and we'll do things like order. We can do sale. And we can do adjustment An order in this case would be our order out to a supplier so that would be incoming that's going to increase our inventory a sale obviously is going to decrease our inventory and then we'll put an adjustment option here as well we will just add this field and then the last thing i want to do is create a formula call this inventory change go into the advanced editor and we're going to write an if statement we're going to do if the type, so a drop down that we just created is equal to sale. Then we're going to take the quantity and we're going to make it a negative number. So we're just going to multiply by negative one. If it's anything else, it's just going to equal the quantity. We'll go over to transaction ID, do the link to inventory, and we'll just make this the date. For now. You will see here in a moment how all of this works. Once I enter some data, I'm going to flip over to the inventory and start adding some records. 
So basically if we click plus, we can go into here, we'll select the product we want. So I'll just select this one. We'll select the location, wherever that exists, we'll go warehouse two. And then what will happen here is we can actually delete this. I don't think we can convert it to a roll up, So we'll go into here, type in roll up. We're going to look at the transactions table and we're going to bring in the inventory change and just leave it as a sum. Within our inventory, we have product here. We have the eco-friendly notebook in location two, and we'll change the name of this roll up to quantity available. And we can see right now that there is actually no available quantity. But if we go over into transactions and we select transaction, we'll link to the inventory and there's just the one at this point in time and put this pen and we'll select this as an order so we can see that the inventory change is a positive 10 and if we flip back into the inventory here we can see at warehouse 2 based on this eco friendly notebook there is 10 available items if we flip over to products we can see here once we change this to a formula and similar to the roll up we cannot convert it so we'll have to delete it, go into formula, quantity available. And what we want to do here is look at the link to inventory. We're going to use the dot notation that's available. And then we are going to do the quantity available. And then we're just going to wrap this in a sum function. So sum linked inventory dot quantity available. We'll add that field. And you can see here that it calculates to 10, which is correct because we only have one record here at this point in time. If I go into here, click plus, we're going to use this eco-friendly notebook again. I'm going to just copy that down. The difference this time, I'm going to select storefront and I'm going to go into transactions. We're going to add a transaction. We're going to select this storefront one and we can do... 25 in this case we'll just do order and it will show an inventory change of 25. now if we flip over to inventory we can see there's 10 that live in the warehouse and there's 25 in the storefront but if we flip over to products it'll show you the total of 35 that we have in stock for this particular now for example let's say that we have the 10 within stock here and we want to bring in five of them over to our storefront. What we could do is select here. We'll go into the warehouse two, select that option. We'll put in a negative of five and we'll do an adjustment. And then we'll have to replicate that because we're going to move it over to the storefront. So we can go in here, positive five, and this can be an adjustment. We flip over to inventory. We can see that there's 30 that exists within the storefront and now only five remaining within the warehouse too. But within products, we still actually have 35. A couple of other things that you can do to clean this up within the inventory table. If you right click or go into the group here, we can actually group by the location. So if I go down here, then I can see at each location where all my products are and then over in transactions, if we go spotlight, we can do the select field based on type. And then so that we can easier see what's happening, I can quickly look at this and without looking over at the type, I can see that it's blue. I know that's an order. That's incoming stock, greens and adjustment. And if I click into here, let's say we've made a sale at the storefront of two items and we can select that as a sale. And let's change this color for visibility. We can go red and we can quickly see that I know that this record here is a sale because it's red and it's showing up as negative two now, which reflects here that we've removed two from our stock at our storefront. This is a relatively simple setup for an inventory management solution. As mentioned, there's a bunch of different ways that you could optimize this to fit your specific needs. You can bring in records using tools like make.com, other automations to be able to update your inventory, or you could just add an orders and sales table 
right within this solution here if you want to track your orders and sales that way as well. It's completely up to you. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.